All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the first session of Tokyo Red. Uh, Tokyo Red is what I hope will be a continuing weekly Cyberpunk Red campaign moving forward. And yes, before you ask, Cyberpunk Red is set in the same setting and universe as the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 video game. Uh, chronologically, Red is set somewhere between 2077 and the old rule set, the one that preceded Red, uh, 2020. Uh, specifically, Tokyo Red is set in 2050, and if you didn't guess by now, it is literally set in Tokyo. But I'll get into that opening monologue stuff in a bit. First, I wanted to set some ground rules and some disclaimers that I do at the beginning of every campaign, mostly to cover my ass, but also to set expectations. Um, so first and foremost, uh, both myself and my players are relatively new to the Cyberpunk universe. And because the Jumpstart kit for Cyberpunk Red literally came out at Gen Con a few weeks ago, we're all new to Red as a system. So we're going to make mistakes, uh, both with rules and with the lore. And what I would say on that is my number one goal as the Game Master is to keep everyone engaged and the scenes flowing. So what that means is that sometimes I might decide something that is contrary to a given rule or a bit of canon in favor of keeping the scenes going. Um, all I ask is that if I'm doing something tremendously wrong, uh, please let me know because, again, I'm not psychic. I don't know what everyone is thinking or if I'm missing something completely. Um, just be civil about it. You can drop it in the anonymous feedback form, which is down there uh, below this window if you're on Twitch. And uh, there's also uh, in chat if you prefer to do it that way. Um, second, I do have to say that I am relying on an old 2020 source book for the Pacific Rim to uh, sort of set the scene for what Tokyo is like in 21 or 2050. Um, again, I'm not gonna make um, nah. again, I'm gonna make mistakes and sometimes I'm just gonna say something that maybe doesn't work with established Canon. Uh, it's not because I'm trying to paint Japan and the larger Pacific Rim in a bad light. It's, again, sort of a I'm learning as I go sort of a thing. Um, so again, if I'm doing something totally wrong, just bring it up. We'll handle it. Um, pretty much that's all I have to say before the opening lore dump, uh, except for one final thing. Um, something this particular group is used to doing is starting off each session with a form of in-character recap. Now, we'll explore that option once the characters have been fleshed out a bit more. Uh, but what we're going to do for now is be using the Scream Sheets. Now, for the uninitiated, Scream Sheets are essentially slick, flimsy newspapers that are high-speed printed on demand from data terminals across the city. These are part in-world news articles and part adventure seed. And it'll make sense what you see one, so without any further ado, I'm going to swap over the Roll20 screen. And I believe McCall has volunteered to read out this one. Japan Today. The Dangers of Interactive Braindance Entertainment by Kato Nui, concerned mother from Minato, one hour ago. Am I the only parent worried about my child's use of interactive brain dance? Stop me if you've heard this one before. My child spends more than five hours every day in brain dance. When he comes home from Shujin Academy, he hardly even says hello before he locks himself in his room and hooks up to that infernal machine. Who knows what sort of unsavory characters and lifestyle criminals he's interacting with on a daily basis. Is he a juvie gang? I've heard him say the word chumba once. That's an illegal drug reference, I'm pretty sure. Whenever I call him to dinner, he takes ages to unplug himself from that stupid elf game. Sometimes I have to message him on my agent to even get him to respond. I've heard the same story from other mothers in our Minato community and we all share the same concern. The rampant use of interactive brain dance is melting this precious minds of the youth and will lead to a degeneration in the community's cherished morals if left unchecked. Use of our use must be limited to no more than four hours a day. From Segotari. Feel the rush like never before with Segotari's Rush Revolution, the first system to support a latest innovation in VR gaming, interactive brain dance. All actions are now possible in brain dance, including death. You will never want to go back to your old VR system. Play over 200 of the hottest games like Kung Fu Fighter 9 and Elfiness Online. Multiplayer adapter and total environment upgrades are now included standard for a complete freedom of movement and realistic sensation. Older games from the Rush era are backwards compatible. 
Online connectivity is limited to your local city net for safety purposes. Interactive Brain Dance is now possible through proprietary Segatari software and prevents ah, and prevents death of user upon experiencing a death in, during Brain Dance. Segatari reserves the right to remove solid proprietary software remotely in case of digital piracy. Alrighty. So, uh, it is important for me to say, uh, for those who are, again, new to the universe or new to Cyberpunk, uh, Braindance is more or less a total simulation, as in when you're plugged in, uh, you are quite literally feeling and seeing and pretty much every sense out there what the person who made the Braindance is doing. Um, it's also a way to, again, immerse yourself in an environment and you know, disconnect yourself from the existing world. Um, so that'll come up soonish, but let's go ahead and get the first scene underway. So, uh, where is that opening monologue? There it is. All right. So it is the year Jinoku year 32. It is a cool spring evening in Tokyo. The air still slightly damp and smelling of ozone after the afternoon showers. The sun is already headed towards the horizons, its rays peeking through the clouds and the tall buildings. Most people are just getting off work are, and are beginning their commute home. Others are headed for bars, restaurants, and other entertainment hotspots to unwind and meet up with friends, co-workers, etc. In a few hours, the streets will be flush with glowing neon lights reflecting off of the chromes of passerby. And it's really hard just looking around, even for someone new to the city, um, that there had been any damage or change at all from the Fourth Corp War, the very same war that saw the great company Arasaka falling from power after losing a great deal of face. Now, none of that really matters for the present, though. You all, my players, have just finished moving into your new home within a small apartment complex in Shibuya. <clears throat> the complex happens to be owned by one of you in particular, Chono. Now, Chono, you've inherited this building from your family. You've screened potential runners and settled on the other characters for some reason or another. There's two other characters that are due any day for their own move in. AK, we have one player out and we're going to be possibly recruiting a sixth. But for now, it's going to be just the four of you in the building. And more or less, one thing leads to another. And Chono, you're now taking these new residents of yours to one of your favorite drinking spots, the Rockfish Bar. There, you hope to get to know them even better. After all, this may not be the comparatively lawless uh, and sort of western night city, but there's still a very strong sense of community here. You may be one day... Uh, called upon to provide a service for your residents and vice versa. So, uh, starting with you, Chono, uh, if you could introduce both yourself out of character and in character, uh, tell us anything you think that is crucial for the players and myself to know about your character, ranging from physical description to anything that could be found about your character uh, on the sort of web, as it were. Uh, try to keep it brief, maybe a paragraph or two, but if you go over, I'm not going to like ding you or anything. So, Walter, go ahead and take it away. So, uh, I am Walter. I am playing Chono. Um, I, from the previous games, would be best known for Beckett um, or Drake. Um, Chono, as his avatar, and you will see, uh, patterns himself after a very late uh, 90s uh, Japanese professional wrestler. Uh, hence why he has taken the name Chono. Same style, very kind of flashy goatee, sunglasses, almost all the time. Cool. Up next, uh, we're going to go with airbags. So, uh, Bishop, tell us a little bit about airbags. <clears throat> uh, airbags is a recent immigrant to Tokyo, like probably literally within the last month or so. Uh, originally a nomad from one of the sort of clans of nomads that provide armored escort on the American coast, uh, recently having had to flee to Tokyo for various reasons, uh, doesn't really have much in the way of jobs, and probably the only real reason anyone's sort of tolerating him is because he actually owns a car, which is a bit of a rarity. That it is. That it is. Excellent. Uh, up next, let's have Akari. All right. Um... 
Ikari is a half Caucasian, half Asian uh, female with very little in the way of gen sculpting or obvious cybernetic implants, except for one of her arms is cybernetic and beneath the uh, the uh, ah, sorry, uh, the cor the cornea of one of her eyes has been replaced with a uh, optical uh, image image capture device. Um, she has several ear piercings. Uh, dresses very moderately for this uh, type of environment, and the only thing of note is her slightly colorful hair. Excellent. Out of curiosity, how colorful is it? Pre uh, mostly uh, Asian black with, as the avatar shows, the front stripes have been artificially uh, gen modified into uh, purples or blues. Alrighty. And last but not least for today, we have uh, Xavier. Hello, I am Scotty. I played Preer on the previous renditions of the, of the Star Trek, and I am playing Xavier. Uh, Xavier is a uh, tech, so he works on uh, different technologies as well as kind of subs as a doctor as well. Uh, is say, early 30s. Uh, he does have uh, cybernetics in his arm. Alrighty. So again, uh, you all are, uh, you all are proceeding down a uh, very pedestrian crowded street uh, in the backyards of Shibuya. Uh, there is already the scent and uh, the visual of people hawking wares, uh, be it simply food carts or uh, restaurants that have uh, sort of an open face, as is typical in uh, most Asiatic cultures. Um, you are seeing in all manner of individuals. Uh, one thing I should say, uh, again, for those unfamiliar with the cyberpunk universe, uh, it differs from Shadowrun in that when Shadowrun, um, you can expect to see things like elves, dwarves, trolls, uh, basically fantasy type elements. In cyberpunk, it's more quote unquote hard sci-fi, meaning you're only seeing humans, uh, with obviously chrome or like limb replacement, cyber limb replacement. Uh, which means that if you see something out of the ordinary, like someone with pointed ears or someone that doesn't look like a human, it's because they have the, uh, in this case, the new yen, uh, which is ironically the same across Cyberpunk and um, Shadowrun. But uh, it's because someone has enough new yen to spend for them to look the way they do. And one thing I like about Shadow or not Shadowrun, one thing I like about Cyberpunk is that there's a lot of uh, importance, not just in Tokyo, but in general, on how good you look. And that's sort of the name of the game, is you want to look good and you want to be a badass at the same time. So, uh, before I throw you guys in the bar, I did want to give you an opportunity to roleplay for just a little bit. And as again, you are just headed down the street. You are more or less keeping to a group, despite the large crowds around you. And for the moment, uh, Chono is in the lead, leading all of you. So take it away. Uh, so what's the environment like for guns? Is it open carry? That's a very good question. I'm glad you brought it up. So based on my research, uh, in the cyberpunk universe, uh, you are not allowed to carry a bladed weapon more, uh, longer than 30 centimeters. Um, if you do, it is considered a like actual sword or a blade and will get you into a lot of trouble. Um, similarly, uh, firearms are expressly forbidden, but considering the black market is a thing, um, you know, that's not going to say that, oh, we don't have guns, that doesn't mean the enemy has them, that sort of thing. Um, so what I would say is use your best judgment when you're in public what you take with you. Um, there are ways to get licenses for the larger blades, like if you own a katana and for some reason you want to carry around a katana, there are ways to get licenses for that. But in general, um, most weapons, quote unquote, that people carry around, if they carry any, are quite literally uh, kitchen knives. And uh, on that same vein, uh, most of the murders in Tokyo, uh, again, according to my research, are actually done with uh, kitchen knives themselves. All right. Uh, so Unfortunately, I'm... Airbags has a car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Airbags willing to drive us to the bar? 
I mean, probably, yeah. So, uh, actually, now I've got to actually describe his car. I mean, like, it's a large, it's actually a fairly sizable car. Like, it fits six people. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably gives a couple of hints at his, his uh, background because it's currently a normal car, but you can see, like, the marks and a couple of stray bolts that didn't get taken out where bits of armor were previously welded on and have since been stripped off to make it street legal, so to speak. Okay. And uh, something that looks like it was very definitely a weapon mount at some point, and now it's just a sort of a pair of holes in the bonnet. So would you say this is more SUV or more van? Uh, hmm... Probably more... Uh, hmm. Oh, good question. Probably SUV. Okay. Are the windows tinted? Uh, no, actually, probably not, no. Uh, uh, in fact, the back windows are sort of slatted, and the front of the front of... The front windows are just normal glass. Okay. I have made a note. It, it, it does... It, it looks like it's trying very hard to hide its Mad Maxiness and failing. Gotcha. Ikari's going to stare out the window just absentmindedly, not paying much attention to her other passengers, and she'll just speak up out of... after a few minutes of silence... You're not going to make me fix something in this thing for free after giving me this ride, are you? Oh, uh, trust me, I would not let you touch it, touch this without me being there. Good. I. This is weird for me. Other yeah. people, I'm not used to being so social. Wasn't aware that a face-to-face uh, -face meeting with tenants was a requirement when moving in here. Eh, check well, the, check the next never break. been a tenant, so I wouldn't know. Nope, actually, that last right. Uh, then, yeah, take the next one. We'll go around the block. Oh, oh, oh wait. Oh, right. Uh, of course, left side, not right side. There's a few so hogs as you get to go around rain. the block. So, uh, eventually, we get there. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you all do arrive at the aforementioned Rockfish Bar, and uh, you find parking pretty easily. Uh, one of the probably many storage decks or uh, parking garages in the area. And when you enter the Rockfish Bar, uh, Chono, it's a very familiar site for you. Uh, it is basically two actual bars that are serviced by automated arms and articulating machinery. Um, at the moment, uh, strangely, uh, even for this time of hour, um, the only other occupant in here is, well, aside from like the human bartender that has to be there in case a the machine breaks, um, is an individual you have not seen at this bar before. Uh, they are feminine. Uh, they have uh, one side of their head completely shaved, and then it's sort of a comb over to the other side. Uh, it's stark white, and without even really looking too hard, you can tell that their eyes are obviously implants, and that they seem to have some form of uh, cranial access port. Maybe for their plugs, you're not quite sure. Um, but, Chono, you step inside and... Uh, Take it away. This is your favorite place, so I'm going to let you define uh, what it's like from there. Uh, okay. Um, he'll take him to seats, all of where we're sitting, or where we're at on the map, um, and uh, take up spots at the bar. Um, and uh, actually, he'll just order for everybody. Um, whatever... I guess, how specials would be for this place? Uh, again, this is actually based off a real bar. My research shows that this particular bar is well known for its scotch, whiskey, and bourbon. He'll give them the options and then order whatever they want. Okay. So... 
Uh, you give your order to the uh, robotic attendant, and immediately the uh, articulating arms begin to carefully uh, pick up bottles and begin pouring shots or glasses, whatever your poison is, basically. Um, and then once the drink is done, they delicately set it before the person that order it, and then go back to make a- another drink sort of a thing. And uh, after maybe five minutes, if that, uh, you all have your drinks. Mm-hmm. This is yep, so airbags will sort of swirl the bourbon around, give it a quick chug. Eh, not bad. I'm I'm actually quite impressed. Last previous dumps I've stayed in, they they barely maintain their service appendages. Half the beer is usually spilled out by the time it makes it to the deck to the deck, and they still expect you to pay full price. I sip at a, a malt whiskey. Well, I mean, this is Tokyo, so. Yeah. Like, which, but a better part than the slums I was in before. Oh, you live here? Ah, no, no, silly question. Of course, of course you do. Everyone does. Except me. A couple years. Here and there. Now I'm here until I'm not. Mm-hmm. Sort of airbags raises a glass to that. I'll I'll raise it and down the rest of it, and then I'll start looking at uh, Xavier's implants. That was some. Um, how clean are your uh, implants, there, Xavier? They're pretty clean. Okay. That's a decent graft work you got there. I always appre- I can appreciate the work of another tech. I'll just tap my arm. Built this myself. Still working on it. Oh, you know how it is. No matter how good an implant is, you can, you can always find a way to upgrade it if you have the time, money, or imagination. That is very true. If you need any help, let me know. I was about to offer you the same thing. Great minds apparently think alike. I'll just frown slightly and head back to look over at Chono, who's... So, boss, what's your story and why are we here? Uh I just... I just wanted to meet the new people that will be staying in my apartment complex and figured this was a good public place to go. Well, haven't shot anyone, threatened to stab anyone. I, I must say that you're a far better la- tenant or landlord than some previous ones. You're not going to go through my toolbox at night while I'm sleeping, are you? Hadn't planned on it. Good. Well, now I'm kind of curious what he'd find. You don't want to (laughs) know. Trust me. You don't want to know. Now I kind of want it to. Now, now, another... You should know. One tech to another, you don't look in a lady's toolbox without her permission. I can attest to that, and he sort of holds up his left hand and you can see like the fingertips are sort of capped in like plastic or something well if you need something the first job's free I just ask a favor in return Uh, I like them how they are right now so Chono I would like you to make the very first roll of the campaign. No pressure here. Uh, This is going to be a human perception roll. So that is, if you don't have human perception, uh, you're just going to be rolling your EMP, your empathy, and adding a d10 to that. Uh, I guess I'm good enough that I do have it, so... (laughs) 
a 17. You notice that the other occupant of the bar, again, aside from the bartender, is someone you've seen before. And you realize after a few moments of, like, looking in her direction that you're pretty sure that this is a off-duty officer of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police that you've maybe seen a few times. Now, what the nature of that, the, the seeing is, I leave to your discretion. Okay. Well, um, I'll look at the, the three people with me and just tell them uh, if you're going to be discussing business, I would keep it down. And he'll just continue to look, still with sunglasses on, uh, at this other person. I'll just make a quick... <clears throat> sorry. Well, what do you know? And he's empathetic, and actually seems to care about us. I like this guy more and more. <clears throat> I'll signal for another drink. Well, if you're in jail, you can't pay your rent. There's truth to this. Uh, speaking of which, when's the first when's the first round of bills due? Yeah, seeing as how you guys moved in recently, um, I would say probably a while, maybe at the end of the month. Uh, seeing as how if you can get work, or we can get work. <clears throat> Been a nomad for years. It's, it's actually surprisingly easy to find and work if you know where to look. And as Do irony would have it, uh, it's at that time that the off-duty police officer uh, picks up her drink, begins walking towards the four of you. Uh, how do you all react to this? Um, do I happen to know a name? Or at least, like, a last name? Um... Let's make a roll of it. Uh, let's say that this shall be a... Uh, what could this be? Uh, local expert? Yeah, let's do a local expert. I like that. I mean, seeing as how if she's a local police officer, maybe... And I've had run-ins. Um, yeah, makes sense. A 14. 14 is uh, more than enough. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, you are able to put a name to the face. Uh, this is Officer Lance, uh, L-A-N-T-Z. And uh, they appear to look uh, like they have a scowl on 24-7. Um, so it's hard to really tell if that's just, you know, quote unquote, resting bitch face or if she's genuinely upset, you know, pretty much all the time. Got it. Uh, then as she approaches, um, Channel will just kind of lift his glass and, uh, Officer Lance, uh, what brings you down to this part of town off duty? She looks you up and down Chono and says, Chono, right? I know your face. It's required briefing. We have to know your family history, but I'm not here for that. To answer your question. I'm actually here off duty, but at the same time, I'm scouting new talent. And I couldn't help it over here that you were looking, you all were looking for work. Is that correct? Hmm. Yeah. Airbags will sort of look around and then volunteer. Well, I mean, limited skill set, but if you need something driven somewhere. Hmm. Well. Uh, let me ask this question. Are any of you familiar with what a brain dance is? I know heard of it. I mean, besides the fact that there's a group getting together that uh, are starting to call themselves MABD, Mothers Against Brain Dance, uh, no. I've partaken in it a few times. Their elf quest thing is popular, but not my thing. Hmm. Well, the reason I ask is because I'm trying to recruit a uh, team of edge runners, which you all seem to fit that bill, uh, to play the part of a quote-unquote ruthless booster gang during a simulated hostage scenario with trainees that are currently in the academy. Would this be something you would be interested in? Hmm. 
What are we talking about pay-wise? I will give you each 300 new yen, and I will literally buy you pizza afterwards. Can't say fairer than that. From one of the good joints, or the sloppy place that literally just tosses soy on a on flatbread? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking real dough, tomato sauce, cheese, the good stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm in. Good, good, good. I don't think good. I've ever actually had real cheese. Oh, you're in for a treat then. Uh, one other thing I should say is that there is one particular recruit I want you to be on the lookout for. Uh, he is uh, a expat from the Americas, and we've taken to calling him a uh, taken to calling him Ten Gallon, which uh, I leave to your imagination as to why. But uh, long story short, he's got a chip on his shoulder. And I want this simulation, and thus you all playing the part of the baddies, to knock him down a peg. I see. So, get a, get a little rough, but not too rough. Mm -hmm. And again, it's brain dance, and thanks to technology innovations, you could quite literally die or kill my trainees, including 10 Gallon, and there shouldn't be any issue. Well, I mean... Don't, don't know if I want to rack up a murder charge this early into the stay. Maybe wait until next month. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, what I would say, though, is if you do knock 10 gallon down a peg, I'll give you each uh, an additional 20 new yen. Sounds like a good plan to me. That should cover rent. I can finally use that DigiWrench 300 that I saw advertised. Mm. Mm, sounds good. And Airbags will pull out his agent. Uh, so, what's the place? And Go ahead, Chono. And if I punch him in the face, will you make that last weapon charge go away? Let's do an opposed roll, because that's how most of the roles in this system work, is it's an opposed skill versus skill. Uh, I would say that this will be for you a persuasion, so a cool, and they are going to be rolling uh, their own set of skills, uh, which I'm just going to roll the d10 after you've rolled it, and I'll let you know the outcome. All right. Um, nah, I was gonna I was gonna dump some of my rather large luck pool, but I don't think I'll do that yet. Okay. Um, persuasion, you said right. Yes, sir. Ouch. And 18 is actually rather good. Uh, with that kind of a roll, uh, Officer Lance kind of squints her eyes at you, Chono, and says, Sure, I will let you skate by on that charge. In fact, there is no charge. And she winks at you. Wonderful. Well, lady and gentlemen... I believe you now have a job in your future. I will leave you to it. Oh, but one other thing. I almost left without giving you directions and what time to show up. Uh, you'll want to show up at the police academy uh, tomorrow uh, in the morning, approximately at 10 a.m. Uh, make sure to bring uh, whatever weapons you wish to have in the simulation. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I will put in a word with the... Uh, street cops and the uh, attendant at the door that you are to be allowed in with whatever weapons you're carrying. I know that you probably have some very nice toys that I don't know about. And she again winks at Chono. Sounds like a, a good deal to me. Mm -hmm. And he'll take a sip of a drink. I'll leave you to it then. And uh, Officer Lance uh, kind of sidles off to this side of the bar, puts her empty glass down, uh, throws some uh, new yen on the counter, and then departs, leaving you four as the only ones currently in the bar. <clears throat> so I'm guessing from the way you reacted that she's at least somewhat on the up and up. For the most part. Um, decent cop. Doesn't really take crap from anybody. I know certain people who've tried to bribe her. It didn't go well for them. <laughs> oh, good to know. You can only imagine who those people are. Uh, 
Well, not me, because I was told not to do it by the person who tried it. So, a decent neighborhood, a good landlord, police that seem actually not corrupted, and a place that actually maintains their drink serving machines. Well, I'm just waiting for this shoe to drop. Oh, don't. Uh, with his drink in his hand. Uh, oh, don't. No, 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 no. There's corrupt cops around here. She's just not one of them. That I know of. Well, good to know that some places don't change no matter which community you decide to slum in for a while. It's usually not the, um... It's usually the beat cops that are the, um... Corrupted ones. And maybe some of the higher-ups. Not speaking from experience. Oh, of course not. So, do you want to get dinner set, Rachel? Save that for after we get the money. I spent most of my money getting my tool sets and bed transported here without being stolen halfway through. I'm looking to Chono. I'm assuming you have the tab tonight. Um, he'll look over at the uh, pile of Nguyen that the uh, officer left. Um, apparently it's not on me either. Yeah, and sure enough, if uh, if you all look over, uh, Officer Lance has actually already paid for your drinks. Like, there is more than enough to cover both her drink and all of yours. I like her already. Mm. Well, it <sighs> never never hurts to be on good up and up terms with a police officer especially as a landlord <sighs> been a while since I was in a brain dance uh, what you call it um, uh, out of character what's, what's the term for acting in a brain dance thing? Running? Edging? Um, it's not net running because net running is its own sort of subset of hacking um, as far as I'm aware brain dance is just simulation so I yeah. picture Sword Art Online. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got hired to stand in for a couple of them back in the States. But, uh, yeah, I haven't been a, been a couple of years. Oh, they take their brain dance very seriously over here. There's so many bloody... I hate to use the term cults. I think they prefer the term social group. But, yeah, as soon as you start talking Segotron versus the Nintendo dance. It gets violent. I, I mean, frankly, the only difference between a cult and a social group is how passionate they are. But either way, don't drink the Kool Aid. Yeah. Mm. What's Kool Aid? Never mind. I love it. All right. So, uh, long story short. You enjoy the rest of your drinks, spend a little bit more time out on the town, and the next day, uh, I'm assuming you would like to arrive bright <clears throat> and early? Yes. I mean, I, yeah, I mean b before everyone sort of piles into the piles into the ute slash SUV, uh, airbags actually go, I'll, hold on a second, and I'll sort of climb into the back, pull up the the cushions from underneath the rear seat and pull out a shotgun from underneath and close it again. That into the front with them. And I guess it's a good opportunity. Uh, what weapons, if any, are all of you bringing? So obviously airbags, you've just produced a shotgun. Uh, what are the mm -hmm. rest of you? Um, being we were told to bring our best toys, I will bring the heavy pistol and the SMG. Okay. I have my metal arms, but I also have a shotgun. Okay. I will be bringing a heavy pistol. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... The bags will be leaving his heavy pistol behind, because, you know, he, d he doesn't trust cops that much. Fair. Fair. All right. So it's a fairly pleasant drive, uh, nothing really out of the ordinary uh, as you arrive in front of the uh, police academy. Uh, it is a nondescript square building. 
that's approximately five stories tall that has the Tokyo Metropolitan Police uh, symbol on the front of it, uh, along with the words uh, Police Academy in, uh, what is it called? In, um, not, uh, what, what do they call? I'm literally blanking on Kanji. That's their name, the Kanji characters. Um, and there's actually already waiting for you outside is uh, Officer Lance herself. Uh, she's just sort of standing at the curb as you pull up uh, with uh, a, again, it's hard to tell if she's just upset or if that's her face, a uh, stony expression. And uh, she watches you all kind of clamber out of the car. Um, my question is, are any of you trying to conceal uh, any of your weapons or are you just opening carrying? I mean, the, sh the shotgun would be open and carry. Um, uh, how closely would they be searching them for hidden weapons? That was the thing, because that they might find his uh, sort of backup weapon if they do. I would say you don't know that. Hmm. I would have a uh, lengthy trench coat on with the heavy pistol just sort of hip strapped to it with the trench coat sort of pulled over sort of attached magnetically over it. So it's not hidden per se, but not easily thought, seen at a glance. Okay. Um, just from his family and whatever, uh, the heavy pistol would probably be inside a jacket on like a, uh, um, like a shoulder holster with clips on the other side. Uh, the SMG, however, he will, he'll, he'll tell Lance just straight out hey i have this also you said to bring our best toys um and i didn't feel like walking around with this on a sling in front of a whole bunch of cops and good he'll idea. just point to it sitting in a case yeah. good idea that uh that's also probably why i decided to meet you at front because again certain charges that don't exist implied that you had access to very heavy weaponry yes charges that don't exist and heavy weaponry that I absolutely do not have because that would be illegal. Mm, I'm glad we have an understanding. Well, this way, we're we, uh, we not going to go in through the front entrance. We're actually going to go in through a side entrance here. And uh, sure enough, she leads you over to a uh, an alleyway between the building and the next building over. And uh, she swipes a key card uh, over a panel uh, next to this door. And the door clicks open, swings inward, and Officer Lance motions, his, uh, motions for all of you to head inside. All right, in we go. Okay. So, uh, she once you're all inside, she makes sure the door shuts behind her, and you're in a nondescript sort of white corridor. The floor, the walls, and the ceiling are all... Uh, immaculately white. Uh, it's hard to tell whether it's plaster or if it's metal. Uh, all you know is that it's almost eerily quiet, like the walls are absorbing sound. Um, but what really matters is that Lance leads you all uh, down this corridor until you arrive at a set of double doors. And she takes both handles in hand, opens it, uh, pushes inward to reveal a pod room. Um, so the pods are what you could expect from any sort of sci-fi. Um, think Matrix, think, uh, pretty much, uh, you could probably even think of Fallout if you really wanted to. Um, but it is essentially a simulation pod, which, you know, keeps your body safe while your brain is off doing the brain dance. Um, and you see that there are six pods, but, uh, only four appear to have been booted up and active. And Lance just sort of motions at the pods and says, Make yourselves comfortable. Uh, the only other thing I really need to say before uh, I send you all in is that, again, this is going to be a hostage situation in which you are playing the part of the baddies. This is going to be a three-hour mission for the recruits, meaning that if they are unable to rescue the hostage within three hours, you all win. Now, it's worth saying that uh, you are getting paid one way or the other. So, really, what I would say is put forth your best effort because uh, this whole brain dance training is really the only way to give... Uh, my recruits uh, the kind of training that they need short of 
throwing them against some form of corporate warfare, which uh, I think you all know is uh, not something we really want to get involved in if we can help it. Alrighty. Alright, well, I'll wait for you all to get comfortable then. And she kind of walks over to a control console and sort of waits for you all to get situated. <clears throat> yeah, so, so like, is there a, like, do I press a button or just like? Oh, sorry. Uh, she motions at where the headrest is. Uh, you'll want to reach behind that and sort of like uh, out of character, sort of like an HTC Vive or uh, an Oculus. It's just something that slips over your eyes and would basically read and transmit signals to your brain. Uh, she says, just put that on. Uh, make sure you're resting comfortably, and then once all of you have, uh, quote-unquote, jacked in, I will begin the simulation. Alright, so... Gets himself settled up nice and comfortable. I'll do a quick uh, check of the hardware, make sure that there are no... Um, uh, no uh, pirate jacks or other interfaces that you know, are set to perform a man-in-the-middle style attack or any sort of interface that doesn't look like it should be there first. And then, let's, uh, do you want me to do a check for that? Yeah, I definitely want you to do a check for that. Let's do a basic tech check. Okay. I'm also going to do the same thing. Okay, sure. You may both roll. Um, 25 for... Xavier or Xavier and a 20 for Akari. So the good news, uh, both of you come to the same realization. Uh, the Segotari Rush Revolution systems that are being used for the simulation are stock. They have not been modified. Uh, they are also malfunction free, as in you could pull up the device logs and see that there has not been any malfunction in the current logs. Trust but verify. Plug myself in. I hop in, make myself comfortable, and plug myself in as well. Uh, seeing as how I'm the, I guess the last one at this point, I'll look at Lance and uh, Officer. I I take it this is on the up and up, right? I believe so. I'm not really sure why you would think it wouldn't be. Just checking, and he'll put the goggles on and jack himself in. So, uh, as uh, Lance counts you down from five, uh, your world and reality begins to swim, and you all find yourselves in an office building, in a skyscraper. Uh, in particular, if you were to look out of the glass windows that surround this entire office floor... Uh, you would guess that you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 40 stories up. And the power is off in the office building. So the only light is via uh, emergency lighting uh, above the emergency exit stairway. Um, the sky outside is a dark red, almost uh, as if it were sunset. But kind of in-character knowledge. Uh, the sky from the Fourth Corporate War is very red because of all the nukes and the orbital weapons that got used. It's not as bad as it is in Night City, but it's still noticeable. Uh, but what I'm really driving at is your visibility is low unless you have uh, cyber eyes because I believe cyber eyes uh, do provide a, a low light vision feature. Um, you're seeing that there are various meeting rooms. Uh, these are those long tables um, with the chairs around them. Uh, there's a bunch of cubicles. Uh, there is uh, actual offices uh, around the interior sort of column. And then you've got your elevators uh, and your staircase. Um, probably also of note is that you're seeing a, a digitalization of a hostage uh, they are more or less an inert actor at the moment. They are just literally a person frozen mid-motion uh, in a standard sort of standing position. And uh, as you all sort of get your bearings, uh, you hear Lance's voice and says, Remember, you've got three hours, and the simulation is beginning now. And you all hear a beep, and in the corner of your vision, 
there is a countdown timer from three hours. All right, let's do a quick scatter the floor, figure out where all the access points are. Can can we move the hostage? Yes, I should say that the moment the timer starts, that the hostage uh, immediately begins trying to move. And what I would say is the hostage has not been bound, gagged, or anything else at this point. Yeah, that's going to be the first order of business. First order of business. Um, hands behind his back, so that way we can actually still move him. Um, and uh, uh, I'll go check the officers, see if there's some zip ties or anything. Okay. So, uh, because I think it interesting, uh, why don't we have uh, Chono, okay. if you want to roll me a brawling, I believe is what we do for grapple, and it will be opposed. Hmm. You should, you should, uh, you should be able to pass this easy. But again, I'm just trying to get everybody acclimated. All right, a 12. And the hostage is going to roll that. So yeah, uh, Chono, you very easily uh, wrangle in the hostage. Uh, meanwhile, uh, airbags, you are searching the offices, yes? Yep. All right, I would like you to roll me a... Let's do a perception, so an int. There we go. A 14. Uh, I would say you're not really finding anything like an actual zip tie, but you are finding uh, bits of rope or other bits of twine that could do in a pinch. Well, I mean, is are all electronic devices now in, in this time period cordless? Sort of, yes. Um, some of the desk phones actually have like the... Mm, excuse me. Um, have the uh, cord, like the curly cord, but... Uh, I don't particularly know how strong that would be to bind someone with. Um, well, we'll find whatever we can use, and then we'll we'll bind his hands behind his back, um, and um, uh, yeah. find. At least one of us is going to have to keep an eye on him, though. Well, yeah. Um, find cloth, t-shirt, rag, something, and not like shove it in his mouth, but at least tie it over his mouth so he can't yell. Um, and where where were the um, the elevators points of egress would be the two stairs yeah and I'll, this uh, middle section yeah I'll, I'll point it out to you so let's see if the stream sees that the stream does not so I have to ping using this tool all right so this area here are the elevators uh, there's an elevator here 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 and here so four elevators there is the staircase here uh, that goes both up and down. <coughs> and then over here on the right of this map, there is another staircase. Now, what I would say is that you're seeing that that staircase is uh, operated by an electronic lock, as if this is a service staircase or otherwise not a typical means of entry. Um, but it is worth noting, again, that it is uh, locked by an electronic lock. Um, mm -hmm. Really, the only other points of egress, if you could call it that, are the windows that surround uh, this entire office floor. Okay. Keep them away <laughs> from the windows. Yeah, and we've got enough tables, chairs, stuff like that. We can probably block off the elevators and the, um, the, the stair entrances. <clears throat> um, Sounds good. And is it this uh, so point? I guess... Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh but basically, the airbags will start getting chairs and sort of dragging them to sort of block up the elevator doors so that anyone trying to come out is going to make a lot of noise. Okay. Um, and I want to move... Shit, I was hoping one of the corner conference rooms didn't have uh, windows. Uh, I want to move the hostage to one of the, like, smaller... Um, offices that are less windowy. <laughs> okay. I disagree with that a tactical assessment. Here's here's where I'm coming from with this. The service entries are typically far more uh, far heavily reinforced than a typical staircase, and the fact that they require a access in access card out would mean that 
well, let's face it, cops are going to have that anyways. We'll have to hack it, but we'd be we'd be also an easily tr we'd eas we would easily be trapped inside. However, we they would have to telegraph their entrance coming down, coming up. We'd hear them. They don't do that sort of stuff like soundproofing or making it look pretty. Most likely heavily reinforced stairs, metal or concrete wall. We'd hear them coming a mile away. Plus, if they do come out the elevators or the usual thing, they'd have to circle all the way around to get to us. They'll check it, of course. We'd have to dissuade them somehow, perhaps barricade the floor above. Mm. That might work. So it is at this point, I need to ask, uh, who has the highest modifier to their perception skill? Uh, let me My see. perception is a 14. 14 for me. Yeah, 11. 11. What's Chono got? I think Chono was the only one who didn't chip in there. Yeah, because I'm I'm doing my old things and being muted. Um, <laughs> regular perception 10, human perception 12. Okay. Uh, I will say that those of you with 14 perception, I'd like you to roll me a perception. Okay. 20 and a 22. Nice. So... Both, uh, both uh, Xavier and Akari, uh, you are going to hear the very, very faint sound of what might be a gyro out of character, a helicopter. And sure enough, you look out of the windows and approximately 150 meters away out from the building uh, in the city skyline, there is a aero gyro, aero gyro. Um, that is hovering a sort of parallel sort of elevation from where you are. And not a moment too soon do you notice this gyro that it opens fire. Uh, well, at least one of the passengers fires something at you. So, I get to roll this. Alright, so the good news is, uh, what happens is a bullet, uh, smashes through one of the windows and uh, embeds itself through the walls until it hits the wall next to the hostage. So I'll just make a note of which windows and where the bullet holes are. Whatever we're doing, right. you do it now. Yep, so unless anyone gets there ahead of him, airbags are just going to sort of dive and tackle the hostage to the ground and then start pulling him around out of the line of fire. Sort of Wait thing. a minute. Oh, yeah. So, they're trying to retrieve the hostage, yes? That's what we were told? That is correct. Yep. Yes. And we weren't told in any way, shape, or form that if we kill the hostage, that nothing bad's going to happen. Well, I mean, uh, like, you're not going to be charged for murder, but it would defeat the purpose of the simulation if you yeah. just killed the hostage. We're, we're kidnappers, <clears throat> not assassins. I understand that. What I'm saying is, if they kill the hostage, they lose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Okay. I mean, right. Airbags is just sort of like going on instinct here. It's like, oh, shoot, they're, they're shooting at our hostage. Get him out of the, on the fire. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, Chono, uh, since you brought it up, uh, why don't we have you roll a, I would say, normally I would say marksmanship, but I think marksmanship is literally just firing the weapon. I don't think it's knowledge. So let's have you do a. Do you have tracking? No. Okay. Um. What is your int score? Seven. Seven. Uh, why don't you roll me a uh, an int roll, and uh, I might give you further information on what this what just happened based on that int roll. And this will be sort of representing your knowledge of firearms, uh, knowledge of tactics, things of that nature. Um, all right. So just, uh, whoop, what the hell? Um, why? Yeah, it'll just be a, a, a one just D10. A, a D10 other. roll plus my, um, my end score. Yep. You got it. A 13. 
So you're not going to be 100% on this, but you know, you've been in a few scraps. You're able to tell basics, especially when snipers are involved. Um, that bullet was probably not meant for the hostage. It was probably meant for one of you. Hmm. <laughs> I see why they need training now. They can't aim. Interesting. I'm Either that or they don't... Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just going to look at the uh, hostage, look at the window and the, uh, and the gyro. Service staircase looking real good right now. Let's go. Yep. So, start dragging the hostage in the direction of the service. Uh, I'll staircase. head over there so see if I can hack into the electronic lock. Alright. So, we are going to go into initiative order here. Um, that way we can track who's moving where. Uh, so, the way uh, initiative works, uh, again, if I remember correctly... Uh, your initiative is just going to be uh, your, I believe it's reflex. I'll double check. Do, 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 do. Yes, it is. Your initiative is reflex plus 1d10. So let me... Alrighty. Okay. So I see even 11 for Akari. I see airbags has a 17. Chono has a 12. Uh, did Xavier roll? Or Xavier. I keep thinking the French saying, because I took French and I was Xavier. <laughs> well, in Catalonia, it'd be very similar. Because it pulls from both French and Spanish. Gotcha. And then, what is our sniper's reflex? I wrote this down. His reflex is a 9. So in 11. Alrighty. Add turn. Get him in here. Alright. So, airbags, you are the lucky winner. So, what would you like to do? Now, what you have uh, as actions, or what is your action economy, um, you get to move a number of squares equal to your move. Uh, we're not going to bother with yards, my, or yards or meters. We're just going to use units because it's easier that way. Um, and you have a single action you can do. Um, now that action could be an attack, could be a grab, could be a choke, could be a throw. Uh, you could get up from prone. Um, you could run, a, you could run, which is basically another move action. Uh, you could use a skill, uh, that would take about three seconds. Um, you can use an object. Uh, none of you are net runners, so I don't need to say that. And you can also hold an action. Right. Now, of course, if you have something that is not one of those, just pitch it to me and we'll figure something well, out. Oh, well, I think he will grab the hostage and then start dragging him towards the service elevator. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to say is because the hostage is already, uh, bound up, I'm not going to have you roll the opposed brawling. Um, so you are easily able to move him. Now, what is your movement? Uh, one second. Uh, I have somehow failed to write this down. It's in your attributes. Nope. Attributes, attributes, attributes. Yeah. Attributes and ability should be filled in there. Oh, move. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, five. Five. All right. So I would say you can move five squares and the hostage will come with you. And you should be able to Alrighty. move the hostage, so feel free. Right. So he'll get to about there. All right. So that is airbags' turn. So airbags, you grab the hostage, start moving him towards the uh, service uh, staircase. Chono, what are you doing? Um, I will move in the same direction. Um. And I can't get a hold of any furniture or anything on my way. Um, so, yeah, I'll just move. Okay. And my move is also five. Alrighty. So, it is at this point that uh, the air dryer... Air, I'm just going to call it a gyro. I'm not going to call it an aero gyro. Uh, the gyro gets another shot off. Uh, this one is going to be aimed at Akari. So, uh, Akari, uh, another window shatters, as this time the bullet hole 
it's about there, so right off to your right. Well, that was a little close for comfort. Mm -hmm. But it is your turn. Okay. Let's see. So they are most likely... Uh, let's see. Uh, does the building have currently have power? It does not. It does not. Okay. Plan B. Okay. Um, you said that most of the tech now is wireless, which means most of it is probably set most of it is probably has some sort of battery power mm -hmm. okay i want to um these walls here yes um glass or um, oh you know what i should paint bullet holes through them as well so uh they are essentially glass with quote unquote privacy filters on them Mm -hmm. But that pane and this pane have been shattered, and the glass is just laying on the floor, scattered to where it will. Okay. I want to. I want to run over, crouch behind the desk here. Okay. Um, and I'm. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this in one turn or not. You'll be the judge. I want to configure one of the wireless televisions to overheat which will hopefully start scrambling the any infrared detection that they're using hmm, interesting i will say this will be a tech roll a basic okay. tech roll i'm good at basic tech uh, as as I is in 18 when would you like it to begin? Immediately? Is there a delay? Um, I would like it to go off. I'd like to like it to start at the end of this initiative. End so of this initiative. once it, so once the initiative resets, then it'll kick on. All right, noted. And that is your turn, uh, Xavier. What are you doing? I think I'm going to follow uh, Kari's lead and try to set one of i'm assuming there's like a television there yeah there's and... a there's a tv there there's also one in the wall directly behind you i think i'm gonna set this one off so like we have two kind of heat scramblers on either side all righty yeah so go ahead and move on over and uh, roll me that basic tech i also have cyber tech um i think cyber tech works more for implants right yeah. right i think so yeah i think you've got it right so yeah just a basic tech with a 20 and when would your when would you like yours to go off uh try to synchronize it up all right so at the end of that round uh what happens is uh your televisions that you've hacked into uh begin sort of you know just playing a static image but what really matters is it's putting off infrared which does sort of make it a little bit harder to see you uh in the darkness or well at least via infrared anyway um visually what happens is that the dim sort of office is illuminated by the tv screens which uh do sort of make uh the hostage airbags and Actually, just hostage and airbags. You are somewhat back illuminated by the television screens. But, uh, airbags, it is <coughs> your turn. Alright. It'll continue dragging the hostage in the direction of the... Uh, the staircase. Okay. Try and get him out of the line of fire. Alrighty. And then Chono, it is your turn. Um. Yeah, I I guess I will just do the same way because there's no way I can dash past them, correct? Or you, is there? I would say you can move through allies. So if you wanted to run past them, you could. Um. And would running past them be a double move then? Yeah, you would take your action to run, which lets you move again. All right, and that would be, yeah, that would be my movement twice. All righty. Because I'm pretty sure I can't double move while I'm dragging a person. Unfortunately, no. Um, 
Chodo, I'd like you to roll me a perception, please. A 14. So, you can't really see what it is at the moment, but there is what appears to be a strange box uh, in this office here, represented by the blue X. Um, it's cowboy patterned with cactuses interspersed. It's a very large package. I would say maybe about the size of a... Uh, Maybe a small refrigerator, like a, like a mini fridge. Okay. But that's what you see from your angle. Angle. Um, so that is your turn. Uh, for the gyro's turn, what's going to happen is uh, the gyro is going to more or less fly over to the other side of the building. So the shots are now coming from the southwest. And uh, with this new angle, they have a bead on Xavier. So, Xavier, you're our lucky winner today. Let's see what 10 gallon rolls. Apparently, he still can't hit crap uh, because uh, another bullet just whizzes on by. Uh, pretty much goes right about there, so somewhere in front of you. And uh, yeah, that is his entire turn. Akari, what are you doing? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we've so far there's only one gyro. We haven't seen any further. Nope, you've just seen the one gyro. Cool. I'm going to run. Um, so I'm going to take a double move. Okay. Um, I'm going to run through this office here since the wall was broken by the sniper rifle. Well, that's where the bullet hole is. It isn't oh, broken. Oh, bullet hole. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Then I will run around the office. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And end up there. Alrighty. Xavier, it is your turn. Can I do a move and shoot? You can. Uh, so I, I think my movement's five. Okay. Is that within five? Uh, if you want to be extra sure, what you do is uh, with your token uh, held down with the left mouse button, uh, right click, it will set a point, and then it will show you the ruler tool. And when you uh, drag and release, uh, it will show that for everybody else. Yeah. Sorry, learning this part. No, that's fine. No, oh, that's a joke. I can't get it to work. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. So basically, though, you want to go five, yeah? Right, yeah. So there we go. go about there. All right. And then shoot the shotgun. Okay. So what I would say here, and I'm going to allow you to walk back this action. Um, the way uh, ranged weapons work in this system is that it is uh, basically the DV is set uh, your by your distance to the target. And uh, the only change in that is if the defender has a reflex higher than nine, in which case it would be an opposed your marksmanship versus their evasion. Um, in this instance, you're using the shotgun, yes? Right. Then let's see, it is 150 meters away, the gyro. So your DV here would be a 35 with your shotgun. So you need to roll 35 or higher to hit. Yes. Um, if you want to know where that chart is, it is under the easy reference handout. Right. What would the rule or like what talent or whatever it is. The uh, it would be a marksmanship for you. Now, what I would say, um, because I don't think I've mentioned it quite yet, 
is that uh, what happens in this system is if you roll a 10, then that dice explodes. It doesn't keep exploding, but it does explode and basically gives you another addition to your roll. So technically, I think it's possible, but if you really wanted to go for it, you'd either have to spend luck or just, you know, fire for effect, as it were. Uh, At least with the shotgun, anyway. Right. I'll try it. I have some luck here too. Okay. How many uh how many luck points are you spending here? Let's do four. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and roll me a uh, marksmanship and we will add four to that result. A twenty-three is unfortunately not enough. Um so you kind of go out into the open, uh you level your shotgun and you fire it out the window. Uh, the gyro doesn't even seem to move, uh, but you've made a statement at least. I will give you that. Works for me. Cool. All right, and we are now back at round number three, so we come back around to airbags. Yep. Yep, still heading towards the thing, uh, probably holding up the hostage as sort of a human shield to try and keep the fire off himself as he okay. keeps going. So airbags, as you pass the office, uh, you're going to see the exact same thing that Chono did. Uh, you're going to see a very large mini fridge size box that has been wrapped in cactus and cowboy wrapping paper. Yeah, so he's going to see them go, huh, and then change his mind and pull the hostage into that room. Okay. And I think that's he can't use his action yet because he was using his action to grab the hostage. Okay. Alright, so Chono, uh, Airbags has seen the same package. You see him almost do like a double take before he drags the hostage into that same room. What would you like to do? I guess. Um, why not? I'll open the package. Alright, so you go into the room and you open the package and what you find inside is something that brings a uh, almost a tear of joy to your eyes. Um, you are seeing inside is a single-use rocket launcher, along with a note that says, we're going to pretend that I didn't see you with this. Excellent. So, I will pick up said one-use rocket launcher. Mm -hmm. And... Hmm. Well, do I guess. Do I have a clear shot? I would From say. Here? I would say probably not. If you could get the gyro to go to the southeast, you would have a clear shot. Um, but the only other way to get a clear shot is either to shoot out a window and go next to the window, because there's cubicles between you and the windows, which are providing some cover, but not enough. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, okay. I at this point I'll just pick it up okay. and um, uh, sling it, whatever, um, and then probably just move back. Uh, I'll kind of duck into this doorway okay. um, and wait for that uh, gyro to come around this way. Noted. All right. Well, uh, the gyro is going to go next, and uh, Xavier, you have made yourself rather much a juicy target. Uh, there is nothing between you and the sniper, so it's going to come down to uh, how well of a shot this sniper is. Oh dear. I believe we have our first damage of the round, or of the game. So, uh, this is a good opportunity to go over damage and all this. So, uh, you are going to be taking 23 damage to your head. Uh, now, oh, Xavier, oh. do you have any uh, armor on your head? Uh, I think we have a cyberjack. I have head armor 11. Okay, so you would reduce the damage by 11, and that armor now becomes 10 because it has been ablated. 
Now, I have like an evasion ability. Does that come in or no? Uh, what is your reflex? Seven. Okay, so your evasion, your, if I understand the rules correctly, um, your evasion is, or your reflex is not high enough uh, that your evasion does not come into play here, unfortunately. Okay. So yeah, uh, you know, this time uh, the sniper's bullet does find the mark and it pings off of your head, Xavier. Uh, it doesn't put you down because I believe you have 35 health. So yes. it puts you down to what, 24? Um, it still hurts and your head is ringing from the shot, but uh, it is uh, probably a sign that you should take cover. But yeah, noted. We go back around to Akari. Okay. Yeah, um, Akari is going to book it again. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Um, I'm assuming that this is the service staircase? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, that's a double move, so I don't believe I can start the hack or breaking open of the lock. Unfortunately, no. That's um, sort of the, the catch-22, is that uh, turns are very quick, but there's only so much you can do on a turn. Fair enough. That is fine. All right. So, Xavier, uh, what is your action after getting pinged in the head by a sniper? Let's do a double move. Okay. I think it's there. Alrighty. Top of the round. Airbags. You saw Chono come in, open the package, grab the rocket launcher inside, and then head back out to your right. All right. Uh, poking my head out the door, can I see where the gyro is? Uh, yes, it is over here, almost directly to the south. Alright, so I'm going to try and aim the shotgun at those windows there and blast them out with a shotgun to give Chono a clear shot. Clear shot. All right, well, that's going to be six units, which for a shotgun means that your DV is going to be a 15. Mm -hmm. All right. So that would be your marksmanship, and you just need to roll a 15 or higher. Oh, so close. Uh, I see a 16 and a 14. I will take the 16. So, oh, did yeah. I double roll it? Yeah, it seems like you double rolled. Um, Weird. You know, in your favor, though, because I'll take the first roll. So, yeah, <laughs> you, uh, you blast out the windows. And uh, let me draw that. So you said these windows here? Yep, those ones. All righty. So Chono, uh, on your turn, after you uh, hear and see airbags blow out the windows, uh, you conceivably have a clear shot uh, out of those windows, but you would have to move to this square here. Okay, um, I will. I will move to. You said here or yep. here? Oh, uh, where you where you were? Okay, so I'm going to move here. Mm -hmm. um, as I slide into this spot. Um, I'm going to knock this table over to give myself a little bit more cover. Okay. And then I'm going to um, uh, shoot the rockets. All right. So uh, let us consult the handy now dandy we, chart. Uh, do I only have one shot. Do you? So do you want to spend luck on this? Oh, I'm going to. Let's see. If, so if that wasn't a question. <laughs> It is 150 meters away, which means that your DV here is a 20. Son of a bee. Alright, um... So how much luck do you have? <laughs> 10. Mm -hmm. Um, but knowing my luck, the player's luck, I could dump all 10 and then roll the 1. <laughs> Um, I know I'm going to miss no matter what, but uh, I will, because my markmanship is no bueno. Um, 
Oh, should have said mine's thirteen. Oh yeah, you should be taking a shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I I'll I'll take the shot and I'll dump. Um, yeah, screw it. Seven out of my ten. Seven out of your ten. All right. Um, so that'll give me um, seven on top of this roll for my marksmanship. Wherever marksmanship, there it is. All right. Bingo. Twenty exactly. 20 exactly. Nice. All right. So Chono, you line up your shot using the table for cover, and you pre- depress the trigger, and the rocket. Well, rockets uh, out towards the gyro. Um, if I remember correctly, yes, here it is. Uh, a missile is seven d ten damage. So go ahead and roll that for me, please. For, for context, right. a shotgun is five d six. Oh, my my the heavy pistol is the biggest thing I've got at three d six. So. Uh... Thirty-six points of damage. So, uh, good news, bad news. The good news is, of course, you do hit the gyro, and it immediately begins smoking and listing to the side. Uh, however, um, what I will say is the uh, ten gallon, the sniper, will get one final shot before the pilot of the gyro, uh, understandably, turns and flies away. So, uh, Chono, I'm going to say you do have a little bit of cover here, which, if it hits, will factor in. Um, no. With a 13, no. So, another bullet just whizzes over your head, and you see that the gyro is, uh, doing its best to maintain air as it flies away. So, we are now out of the turn order, out of initiative, because at the moment there are no hostile actors on the field. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, as the as the helicopter's going down, um, I'll I'll give them the finger as they're going down. As one does. As one should after they just shot down a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then I'll just move back around with everybody else. Alrighty. Alrighty. So so I guess we're crowded around Akari, who's attempting to open the card door. You betcha. Um, I, while Akari's doing that, for shits and gigs, um, I'm gonna look around for any more packages. Okay. Uh, I would like you to roll me a perception, Chono. All right. So, uh, you know, you're looking under desks, you're looking in offices, you're looking, you know, maybe you're tapping the walls even to see if you, you know, hear like a false compartment. Um, at least on the southern half of this office floor, you're not finding any other packages. Okay. All right. Um, then uh, I'll just, I'll make my way to the other half of the office building. I, I mean, I'll tell um, Airbags and Akari that well, I'll tell Airbags because he saw the box. I'm going to go look for more of these. Sounds like a plan. And he'll sort of twiddle, twiddle his thumbs for a bit and then sort of look over the hostage. So, hologram person, why have we kidnapped you? I'm curious. <laughs> ah, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Ikari, that basic tech, is uh, enough that even with the power out, you're able to get into the wiring of the door. Um, You have several options here. Um, You could essentially break the lock, which means they would have to, if they came this way, they would have to uh, quite literally brute force the door open, um, which you would obviously hear. Uh, You could open the door, but the downside to opening the door is that without power... Uh, there is no way to close said door. Mm. Well, um, I'm hoping that the security system would be on its own separate um, power system or the security controller mm-hmm. because I want to scramble the I want to scramble the whole uh, security system or at least the ones that the door sensors so that even if the uh, fuzz have pre-approved, you know, all access cards. 
mm -hmm. get into the ground floor, whatever. Those are now immediately use or nullified so that they lose that advantage. Okay. Uh, usually that would involve a bit of net running, but uh, since we don't have oh, any yeah. net runner handy, yeah. I'm just going to give it to you. Um, so yeah, you more or less nullify the quote unquote all access cards. Well, uh, good news, bad news. Good news is they can't get in. Uh, bad news is well, I've sort of buggered the lock up. Uh, hey, Chono, can you body slam this door? You want me to try to brute force the door open? Well, I've I've made it so that they can't finesse their way in, so that's brute strength now. Um, and here, I'll pa I'll gesture to the um, l launcher tube. You have an improvised battering ram right here. True. Um, uh, so we're we're trying to get in here or to make it to where they can't get out of here? Well, I'm hoping we can hold the hostage inside it because... And I make the whirly bird gesture above my head. They... They had the advantage of air, and where the fuzz may have one heli or one gyro, they may have another. Okay. Um, then yeah, I guess I'll try to bust open the door. All right. Roll me, uh, roll me a straight body check, please. Oh, this isn't going to go well. Actually, it's occurred to me that my cyberpunk arm probably could have accomplished the same thing. Probably, because my body's only like five. Oh. So you should probably punch the door with your metal arm. That might be a better idea. Um, so I'm going to flex my fists of my me metallic arm, mm -hmm. um, make a quick gesture, and the um, knuckles or a second set of uh, telescoping metal uh, uh, ink, uh, detaches and sort of extends it over the fist, doubling its size and strength. Basically, now I'm going to use my big knucks to punch the darn thing. Alrighty. Well, the good news is that uh, you don't really have to roll to hit it. It's a stationary target, and it, if you missed, it would just be embarrassing. Um, so go ahead and roll me your big knucks damage, which I believe is 2d6. 2d6, yep. Seven. So you give this door a rather solid hit. Uh, unfortunately, other than putting maybe a, a small depression in the door, it does not otherwise affect the door. There goes that idea. Uh, right. Question. What's, how intact does this door need to be after we get through? Well, I don't really care. That's not my plan. Is My plan is to get through it and not have to worry about it again. All right. Uh, airbags will come up aim the shotgun point blank at the lock and try to blast it off. Okay. Uh, for you, uh, just going to say, again, you're point blank. There's very, very little chance of you missing here. Go ahead and roll me your uh, shotgun damage, which should be a 5d6. Yep. A 20. 20. So, nice. good news, bad news. Good news, you do punch a hole through the door with your shotgun. Uh, in the process, breaking the lock and making it easy to open and close the door. But that's also the bad news, is that it's very easy to open and close the door now. Well, that's fine. We have an entire office supply of furniture that we can use now to barricade the stairwell. Alright. I'll start dragging in discs. And I just look at um, any... I look at those who are giving me a side eye who... I... And I just say... I have history with people who have done similar activities. Not proud of it, but I, you know, learn what you can from who you can. And then I start, I motion for uh, Xavier to come and help me haul one of these big, heavy meeting tables with our cyber arms. Okay. Sounds good. So as you all work, uh, please put your tokens where you would want them, including the hostage. Mm. Actually, which one of us is going to be on hostage watching duty? 
just throw him in this room and make it so that, you know. He's oh, yeah. Uh, into this room he goes. Okay. Works for me. All right, so Akari, you're working on stuff to the north. Uh, it looks like Airbags is grabbing stuff to the south. Uh, where is Chono and where is Xavier? Uh, they're a bit further off to the left. Uh, am I helping Akari grab that table? It's up to you. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd prefer the help, but that's up to you. I'm just thinking, like, that's the complete other side of the map. <laughs> it's only double move action. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll move down here, and... Um, we've got a lot of chairs we can use here. I was going to start doing the same thing with the other big table, and I just kind of actually want to... Um, which tool am I looking for? Where do we not have the ruler? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, put that big table like across this okay. hallway to to block it to where if another helicopter comes by, that this cool. thing's blocking its way. Sure. All right. So I'll probably involve knocking down some of the glass partition, but yeah, nah. it's, it's a simulation. Nah, you're fine. And and if air airbags brings it up, eh, I don't own this building. Well, no. What I mean is, like, as we go out, we'll probably just knock out some of the glass as we drag it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So let's do this. Uh. Let's have. Uh. We'll do it this way. Uh. Let's start with Akari and Xavier. Uh, both of you roll me a body, and we'll add those scores together to see if it beats the DV. Okay. And then when they're done, we'll go to airbags and uh, Chono. Okay. So rolling body, where? Oh, one uh, d ten plus six. Mm-hmm. Fourteen and eleven. Uh, it does take a considerable amount of effort for you to do this, uh, the pair of you working together, but you are able, in the process, breaking the glass partition between the table and the rest of the office. Uh, can you show me or draw where you would like to move the table? Um, I would like to, if if it will fit. Mm -hmm. If it won't fit, um, I'd like to basically prop it against the uh, downward uh, staircase. Hmm. I would say that uh, you could do so, but it would more or less involve a considerable amount of effort. Which means basically um, if initiative happens, uh, both you and Xavier will be consumed for the first two rounds. Hmm. Okay, then maybe we should just place it um, back here as a fortification. Yeah. Okay. So I will go ahead and doodle on the map here. All right. So that is the first table, and uh, you all can move with that table. And we go to Chono and Airbags. So same thing. You're going to roll your body together, and we'll add those results and compare it against a DV. Thirteen for airbags. Working on it. Um. And a thirteen. And a thirteen. Twenty-six. Uh, do you still want to go with your cross the hallway plan? Um. Yeah, I'd like to, just because, you know, it'll give us more cover. And there you are. Would you like to be on the opposite side of the, uh, so the office facing side or the other side, the one that you're hiding behind? No, the, the hallway side. Okay. Let's go ahead and move yourselves. Oh. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a moment after uh, all of you get behind cover 
that uh, you hear uh, glass pane shattering to the north and to the south. And looking over at both uh, ways, as I mark these off, you all see that there are now two actual armed uh, students, so TMPD students, in full, like, riot gear. Uh, there's two to the south, and there's two to the north. And with that, we shall go into initiative order once more. What's the countdown? Uh, the countdown is currently at one hour and 30 minutes remaining. Right. Let's flatline these feds. Alrighty. Okay, there's airbags. Uh, initiative again? Yep. If everyone could do me initiative again. 1d10 plus reflex, is it? Yep. Okay, so Kari got a 14. Chono got an 8. Airbags crit. Uh, so airbags, uh, I need you to roll me another d10. Because it explodes. And poor Xavier... That's another 9. Poor Xavier is uh, still rolling natural ones, so... <laughs> Which actually, I'm rolling in the wrong. It's uh, it's important because I think I forgot this. When you roll a natural one, you roll another die and then subtract that new die from your current result. I forgot about that earlier. So it implodes. Yes, it implodes. It's a d10. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Alright, so that's a five. That would be a five. Yeah. All right, and then I get to roll for these guys in bulk. So let's see. So the first one, I'm just going to make that guy go last. Second one has that much. Third one has that much. And that one has that much. And we sort by descending. Well, airbags, you are on top of your game. You again mm -hmm. see... Uh, Behind or on the other side of the table that you and Chono have just fit across the hallway, uh, there are two riot geared uh, Metropolitan Police Academy students. Uh, you would presume, based on the swearing from behind you, that there's a similar situation on the other side of the hallway. But what would you like to do? Uh, well, how far away are they roughly? Like more than 12 meters? Well, let's measure. Uh, they are approximately uh, four meters away. Excellent. So maybe a little bit farther, ah. but unit-wise, they're within four. That's what I'm All right. Well then, I am going to uh, aim at the head of the one on the left. Okay. And now the one thing I would say, on uh, the one thing I would say is that aiming for the head specifically confers a minus six to your roll. Correct. Okay. Just want to make so sure. I'm gonna. So going to spend four of my luck on boosting the roll. Okay. So let's see. Marksmanship. 22. Total of 26 minus 6. 20. All right. Well, 20 is all you need to hit with a shotgun at that range. Go ahead and roll me some damage. And it'll be doubled, I believe, if I read the rules right. Uh, the damage that gets through the armor is doubled. So, uh, I believe you. I just want to find where that rule is for my reference. It is page 39. 39. Uh, 38, sorry. 38. Okay. Da, 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 da. If you hit, the damage goes through. The defenders are... Yep, okay. You are correct. So that's a total of 14. Bit of a low roll. Well, uh, good news, bad news. Um... You hit him, but uh, you don't quite take him out. In fact, the, the force of your shotgun blast is enough to literally knock his helmet off. Um, mm -hmm. So he is currently helmetless, which I'm going to say means he has no, or uh, he now has zero armor on his head. Um, and uh, understandably, uh, the gentleman. Hopefully that spooked him. Yeah, the gentleman on the other side is both equal parts uh, angry and astonished. 
I'm gonna actually give these guys uh, each a marking. So you hit orange, uh, green is next to him, and then red and blue. And that's how we say hello on the East Coast! I love it. Alright, so uh, up next is going to be uh, the green dotted one. Uh, so there is going to be a penalty here, uh, based on the fact that you all are behind cover. But let's see what he rolls first. Uh, 15 with his assault rifle. He does have an assault rifle, yes. Yes, he does have an assault rifle. So the range on this is a 15. Well, unfortunately, because of the cover, uh, the assault rifle misses completely. Or rather, the bullets embed themselves into the heavy wooden desk, and uh, his shot is more or less ineffective. Uh, however, for his movement, he will move to the complete opposite side of the table from airbags, so that you know you now are playing the game of you know who stands up and shoots over the cover first. <laughs> uh, but that is his turn. Uh, the next one to act is going to be the blue dot to the north. Uh, Blue Dot to the north is going to move here to use part of the wall as cover and is going to fire down. Uh, he's going to do something a little bit special. Uh, he is going to do what is called a three round burst. And what that means is uh, for every point he gets above the target DV, then an additional bullet will hit the target. Um, so that is a separate range table. And they are within 12 meters, so he has to roll a 12 or better for this to even matter. All right, so because he has rolled a 12, um, I believe that means one bullet hits. One bullet. Da, 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 da. Defender wins in a tie. Okay, so yes, one. Uh, one bullet will hit uh, Akari. So, yeah. Akari, uh, what is your body armor like? I have 11. An 11, all right. Well, uh, That's you're going to take... a lot of six. Yes, uh, you are going to take 23 damage to your body. So remember to reduce that by... Um, 11. 11, much. and then reduce that body armor by one. Okay, so, sorry, that was 26 to the body? Uh, 23 to the body. 23. 23 minus 11 is 12. Okay. Cool. Ouch. That mm -hmm. stung. Yep, definitely hurt. And uh, as fate would have it, it is your turn next. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> well going to let out a, a curse in Japanese mm -hmm. and I'm going to return fire with my heavy pistol. Alrighty. So that is a marksmanship roll. Um, I'm going to dump two points of luck into this. Okay. Your DV is a 15. Okay. God, I keep losing my character sheet. <laughs> Ship. 18 is all you need. All so, yeah. right. So. Heavy pistol is 3d6. Well, uh, yeah. So 18. So that'd be a 20 after the plus two for luck. Mm -hmm. So 3d6. A 12. All right. So you take aim. You fire back at the uh, academy student that winged you pretty good. And uh, you do manage to see the bullet impact him in the chest, but because of his uh, body armor, uh, it doesn't seem to have quite the effect you were hoping. Okay. Now you still have your move, so if you wish I to do. move... Mm, I'm going to move into the... S just behind the door by the stairwell. Alrighty. Into the stairwell. Up next we have Chono. Um, I will come over the top of the, like, shoot over the top at the guy in the orange dot. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to shoot him with the SMG. Okay. Now an SMG can also do a three-round burst, if you so wish. Uh, sure. Okay. So, uh, your DV is a 12. Okay. And do I roll it three times or once? Uh, just once. Okay. Twelve is all you need, so just the one bullet hitting. So an SMG is going to be two D six, I believe. Seven damage. So what happens uh, is you fire off a three round burst with your SMG, and uh, the most of the bullet, well, two of the bullets go uh, careening off to other places. Uh, the one bullet that does hit uh, impacts the man in his left arm. Unfortunately, uh, it seems that his armor has uh, taken almost the entire force of the bullet, and he appears to be unharmed from this attack. Alrighty. Alright, so up next we have Red Dot. So Red Dot's going to come and do the same thing Blue Dot's doing. Uh, because Akari is not in range, that means Xavier, you're the next juiciest target. Uh, 14 will not hit you, actually, because the DV is a 15. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, a, uh, pistol blast, uh, soars past your head, embeds itself into the wall, probably right behind you. Uh, but it has missed completely, and it is your turn, Xavier. Let's do a shotgun blast. Sounds like fun. Which is... There it is. A 14. Uh, who are you aiming against? Uh, I'll do towards the blue target. Okay. So unfortunately, the DV was a 15. So with a 14, unfortunately, uh, your shotgun blast does pretty much what the bullet, the uh, the heavy pistol bullet just did. Just sort of soars past them like a spray of pellets. Lovely. All right, and I'm then... going to duck in the room with the hostage then. Okay. And then last but not least, we have Mr. Orange. And Mr. Orange is going to uh, take out uh, his own assault rifle well he'll unsling it and he's gonna fire a three round burst at airbags and let's just do airbags mm -hmm. so uh he's going to roll an 18 that looks like a hit yes in fact that is all three hits all right yeah. so that's gonna be three hits for you airbags uh mm -hmm. and each one is rolled individually all right so each one of these is reduced by armor Mm -hmm. um, and I have 15 body armor. All right, so first hit, 16. So second hit, 21. And then a 12. All right, so let's do this in order. So it goes 15, 14, 13. So the last one doesn't get through at all. I take one damage from the first one, and then... 14, 7 from the next one. Okay. And then at the end of this three round burst, that's when your armor ablates, so it goes down by one. Oh, uh, doesn't it go down one for each hit? Uh, no, that is something very special that they made note of, is that the armor ablates once per burst after the damage has been calculated. Okay. Oh, well, that, that, that'll that reduce it slightly then. Mm -hmm. So then it'll be one plus six, so total of seven. Cool. My health is actually at 28 instead of 27. Mm -hmm. And at the top of the round, airbags. Uh, you've got some very angry gentlemen shooting at you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, orange student is still next to the windows, right? Yep. All right. This might be a bit of a tricky maneuver, but uh, he's going to try and vault over the table, rush him, and just, like, shoulder check him out the window Ooh, i like it uh i'm going to say this is going to be an opposed athletics all righty my athletics is okay i think i'll spend my other four luck on boosting this roll all righty go ahead and roll 
That was a 21 plus 4, so that's 25. 25. Not sure why it's double rolling. Uh, well, let's see what he gets. Yeah, so uh, what happens, <laughs> his airbags, uh, before green can react, you vault the table, uh, bum rush orange, and orange tries to bring up his assault rifle in time, but unfortunately for him, uh, you're too quick for him. Yeah, I, I just bring up the shotgun as like a metal bar and just shove it into him and knock him out the window. Yep. And you hear what is almost a two visceral scream as uh, Orange plummets to his virtual death. Yep. Very nice. And then I'll just swing around and get. Uh, swing around and, like, just lock eyes with the. Uh, what you call it? Um, uh, green. Mm hmm. And, uh. Hmm. Oh, uh, will you let me try to sort of psych him out as an additional thing? Hmm. Not I'm really. Gonna say my answer is going to be no because there are like cool roles that actually like use your cool and other skills. Okay, I'll um, save that for next turn. Yeah, so next turn would be good. Um, right, so for now, he just spins around to face green. All right. Well, uh, either fortunately or unfortunately for you, uh, Green sees all of this and is going to attempt the same thing on you. So I need you to do your athletics. That way I can keep suspense for my roll until you've rolled. Alrighty. And I used up all my luck. That's a 13. 13. Oh. oh dear. Airbags. Well, I hope you've got airbags because uh, you know where you're going. Down. Yep. <laughs> so unfortunately, airbags, you too are going to plummet to your virtual death. And all of you. Screw you, you cop pieces! Giving him the finger as he falls out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, unfortunately, airbags, you are out of this combat. You're not dead, dead, but you're kind of dead in the simulation, unfortunately. Oh. I, I, I get to experience what I just put orange through. Uh-huh. All right. So uh, the next one to act is going to be blue. Uh, blue is going to roll his athletics to try and get over the table. And he does so, but it will take his entire action to do that. Which means, Akari, it is your turn. Cool. Uh, then right when he gets over, I'm going to shoot him point blank. All righty. Again, the DV here is a 15. Okay. Even for point blank, huh? Yeah, I guess that's 0 to mm -hmm. 12 meter difference. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a little weird that, like, shotguns don't get a bonus to that, but who no, knows? I'm roll I have my pistol, so that's all I got. Yeah. That's fair. Now, so 16 that's is all you need. 2D6. Oh, Five. that's not good. Yeah, so unfortunately, the uh, you fire another round into blue, and again, his body armor just absorbs all of it. Uh, you're starting to see that the body armor is showing signs of strain, but not in any danger of giving out anytime soon, unfortunately. Am I able to tell if I'm hearing people coming up or down the stairs? Uh, I will give you a perception check on that. Uh, so go ahead and roll your perception, and um, let's see. Did... Did you say you were shooting a heavy pistol? Yeah. It's 3d6. Oh. Ah, I only rolled two, my bad. I mean, that extra d6 could, like, help a little. Alright. It does. He does take a little bit of damage. Hooray. Uh, 21 on the perception. 21. Uh, good news. You're not hearing anything from the stairwell. Um, I'm going to shout... Move the hostage to the stairwell. We can move him easier from there. All right. Chono, you just saw one of your tenants fall to their virtual death. You've heard gunfire behind you. What is your move? Uh, so seeing as how there's someone behind me and people behind me were getting shot, uh, I'm going to follow this whole little daisy chain and I'm going to hop the table. And <laughs> in actual... 
uh, one of Chono's signature deals was it was called a Yakuza kick. He runs and just straight push kicks the person in the face. But I'm just going to do it just to try to knock this guy out the window. Okay. And and do it to green. So I'm going to give you brawling on this because I think your brawling is higher for you. Than... Oh, than just body? Than, than athletics. Uh, my athletics is actually a nine. My brawling is an eight. Oh, well... Uh, you may roll either. All right. Um, there it is. Um, I got three points of luck left. Um, I'll spend a point of luck. Okay. Nice. All right. <laughs> so in the continuing comedy of errors, <laughs> Chodo, you vault the table and you give him one hell of a kick, and he goes flying out of the window at more velocity than the other three. <laughs> and he um, too. Can I, can I ask that being I beat him by so much that uh, he dropped his rifle? I'll give it to you. Sweet. And then I will pick up said rifle. All right. It is just your standard assault rifle, but hey, it's a fancy toy to play with. Um, what's the damage on it? Is it the uh, same as the SMG? Uh, let's see. An assault rifle is 5d6. Holy crap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Much better than anything I have. Yep. All right. So that is a very successful turn, which leads to Mr. Red. Uh, Mr. Red is going to do what Blue did, and he too is going to try and get over the table. So let me see... Uh, no, in fact, he only gets about halfway across the table before uh, he loses his, his grip, and he actually plummets floor he ah, plummets prone onto the surface of the table. So that is his entire move. Uh, Xavier, it is now your go. You're muted, Xavier. Did he, uh, did he beat Sorry, I'm here. Okay. I just didn't realize I was muted. Um, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to pop my head out and shoot my shotgun at blue. Okay, go for it. It's, uh, 15 DV. And I'm going to throw, oops, um, where did my character sheet go? I'm going to throw two luck into it. Okay. A 13, unfortunately, is... Well, with the two luck, two luck, you've got it. All right, go ahead and roll me some damage on your shotgun. And it's 5d6. Mm-hmm. A 12. Uh, how would you like to describe this guy going down? I would love that the force of the shotgun hits him and throws him back onto the table on top of the other guy. I'll give it to you. So, uh, blue is uh, knocked out cold, dead, or otherwise on top of his buddy, uh, which uh, his buddy's not very happy with that, but he can't do anything about it yet. Uh, are you moving at all, uh, Xavier? Can I move with my... Oh, you got cut off there. Alrighty. Yeah, I only heard about half of what you said. Oh. I was going to say, I, it keeps dropping to right in the connection. Uh, can I move with the hostage into the stairwell? Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. All righty. All right, Akari. Uh, you've got uh, one... Uh, you've, in, in fact, uh, what, what is your luck there, Akari? Um, I currently have three left. You have three left. If you give me all three points, I will say that when Blue was shot on top of his buddy that uh, his assault rifle did not go with him. I'll take that. Literally, I'll take that assault right. rifle. And then I'm... I just look at the table like, yeah. why don't they ever spring for the good quality of wood? Seriously. And then I just pepper it with uh, assault gun. Okay. Or... Are you doing a three-round burst or a um, just a normal shot? Um, I don't think I have a lot of experience with assault rifles, so I'm just going to hold the trigger down for the three-round burst. Noted. So yeah, that's going to be a DV of 12. Works for me. Uh, 
I keep looking for like ranged combat and it's under marksmanship. Mm -hmm. Go. All right, so that is uh, one hit. So roll me a 5d6, please. Oh, that's some An 18, good rolls. a very good roll. All right. So you spray into the remaining uh, student, and uh, you do hear grunts of pain, but for the moment, he is still trapped beneath his buddy. Uh, are you doing anything else in your turn? Uh, no, I'm pretty much satisfied with the current uh, events. Cool. I'm secretly kind of hoping that Airbags may have dropped the keys to his car when he fell out the window. <laughs> I All mean, right. the keys did drop. Yeah. They did drop. They just dropped a long ways. Oh. All right, Chono, what you got? Um, I'll hop back across the table. Okay. And then I actually want to come in. Um... Hmm. Is Red hurt? Yeah, at all. Red just got sprayed with a three-round burst, and you're seeing a uh, marked uh, depression in the uh, upper torso uh, of the body armor. And if you look carefully enough, you also do see uh, blood red uh, beginning to pool out of it. Okay. Um, I will go up, like, right up next to him, and uh, I don't know if there's rules for Coup de Gras being he is trapped. Yeah, I but, would say that uh, even though there's not coup de gras on the jump start, that there's enough of a situation here that you could finish him off, no problem. Yeah, like he's trapped down. I'm just going to put, you know, barrel to head and sorry, kid, sometimes you got to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'll grab his assault rifle and I'll give it to Xavier. Um, and I'll basically loot and booty both these bodies. Okay. And um, I'll throw them in, throw the bodies in one of these side rooms um, after I take everything I can off of it, whether it's uh, very heavy pistols, uh, uh, flashbangs. If the body armor doesn't look terrible, but I think both of them are pretty much yeah, they're, worse they're... than what <clears throat> worse than what we have. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll just take anything else I can off them, and I'll just slump the slump the bodies off of the. Uh, the, the table. Okay. So while this is all going on, uh, Akari, I'd like you to roll me another perception, please. You got it, boss. A 19. Uh, you hear uh, a very high-pitched whine. Whine as in mechanical or sonic? I would say it's mechanical in nature. It's almost like something is powering up. Okay. Um, is my role good enough to say where, where it's coming from? Yes, it is coming from the wall opposite the staircase. Breach! 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 Pull the hostage back! And I do so. Not a moment too soon. As uh, the wall implodes, sending debris and plaster everywhere, scattering across the stairwell. And uh, on the other side, uh, you see a, uh, another gyro. Uh, however, uh, as, the, as you literally see the sniper at what's the gyro literally point blank, like it's, it's mere inches from the building, as the sniper begins to pull up his barrel, uh, all of your vision swims. And you find yourselves back within the simulation room. <clears throat> so I'd imagine airbags had already sort of woken up and mm -hmm. gotten unplugged by this point. Yep. All right. Standard post brain juice check. Make sure all my limbs are still attached. And that I am actually in the real oh. world and not some silly you know, world world within a world thing that those punks like to play every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Airbags is currently just sort of sitting there. Uh, I did not expect falling 30 stories to hurt that much. Well, I mean, the 
The fall's not the part that hurts. Uh huh. And I'll just kind of pat airbags on the on the shoulder um, as I get up out of the little pod. So how'd we do? Well, uh, you angered Ten Gallons so much that he violated several very important bits of procedure, as uh, you saw there at the end. But uh, overall, I think you did very well. Uh, you will, of course, be receiving uh, the agreed-upon fee, and I believe I also owe you one pizza. Hmm. I, uh, uh question of that. How's the, how's the kid I punched out a window? Uh, he's understandably uh, shocked, but uh, he'll manage. Yeah, you you you, mi- you missed it. After he, after the next one knocked you out the window, I, well, I I uh, introduced him to what Sparta is. Ah, hmm. <laughs> uh, oh well, good training, I suppose. Also, situation you're gonna have kidnappers who go off the deep end. Well, I I don't know about you guys. I think Akari and I had a had a moment there when we locked eyes where we just realized whoever the last one left was going to shoot the hostage with a PD weapon. I I don't know. I I just think it was a good idea. Yeah, to be fair, if it would have been um the way the simulation played out, I think uh, 10 Gallon would have been the one to execute the hostage just would have taken us with them. Yeah. And uh, ironically enough, uh, you hear some shouting in the hallway. It's muffled, but you hear things like, They can't do this to me! I'm the best damn sniper! And uh, Lance just sighs. You almost hit the hostage twice, you damn fool! (laughs) Lance laughs and looks at the door and says, I don't think I'm going to invite him to pizza. (laughs) That would be best. I mean, if you do, he'll probably just sit there while we just rail on him verbally. And uh, be- best not, he might end up actually trying to shoot us. Yeah, that's my worry right now. He's in a very uh, interesting state. I would say volatile. Yeah, volatile is a good word. All right, well, let's get a move on. And yeah, the okay. uh, the final end to that scene is uh, you all... Stepping out of the pods, stretching, and uh, heading off for some well-earned pizza. And that is the end of this mission, titled Just Like Real. So, uh, before I cut the stream, I wanted to uh, get some feedback from the players. And uh, if uh, anyone is watching, feel free to chip in and chat. Uh, What did you guys like? What did you not like? Uh, Would this be something you guys would like to continue doing? Hmm. Uh, Definitely straight straightforward system i'm liking a lot of the like how the they've set up combat and stuff Mm -hmm. and mostly it would just be a case of like waiting to see like what the full rule set is and like what all the options are before sort of making a final decision okay i like it so far because it feels a little bare bones but that's because it's like a a quick start for like one shots Mm mm-hmm yeah, I like it so far. It'll be interesting to see what the full rule set is, and uh... do we Stop. know when? When does the full rules come out? Do we know? Uh, no. So the full rules are, at least what I've seen, quote unquote, when it's done. So that could be uh, as late as twenty twenty. That could be by Christmas. It, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um. Sure. Chances are it'll be right around whenever the game is released. Mm-hmm. The the video game. True. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, the system's cool. Um, it very, 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 very simple. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a neat, nifty little system. Cool. All right. Well, uh, let's do this then, since we seem to be having a good time with it. Uh, We will do uh, another session next week. Uh, It will be less combat focused. It will be more skill focused, more RP focused. Uh, I Mm -hmm. wanted to definitely get you guys acquainted to the combat early, though, because, uh, you know, we are coming from Star Trek Adventures, which was decidedly not very combat centric. Um, so I wanted mm-hmm. to give you guys a taste of that to see if it was to your liking before, you know, I got you attached to the system and then we find out, oh, I don't like combat kind of a thing. <laughs> um, really, the only feedback I have in case uh, anyone, one of the devs is listening, 
Um, in looking at the uh, the range to hit tar charts, there's really no downside to continually firing a three round burst if you've got an SMG or an assault rifle, as in it's easier to hit things with both than it would be normally, which seems odd to me. Um, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. Like three round bursts are sort of like like the standard reliable way of hitting things, right? Mm, yes and no. Um, the reason I say it's odd is because, especially for assault rifles, um, if you are within 12 meters, it is better for you to three round burst than it is to just shoot normally. But it's equal when you go to uh, 13 to 25, and then it's harder when you go past that. So some of these numbers are a little bit weird in my opinion, but the worst case I can just house rule them up or well, down as need be. And how cuz we didn't we obviously didn't um really come up or come into it how um clunky or time consuming is the reload actions. So unless I've yeah, completely yeah, missed it, we actually do not track ammo. Okay, then yeah, you're you're a hundred percent correct. There's zero reason not to just shoot three round bursts the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, there was another game system that they pretty much said had made. I don't remember what it was. I think it was an older, different cyberpunk. But they pretty much said that ammo is so cheap that don't even worry about tracking it. So you just pretty much ran around with assault rifles or machine guns shooting full auto all the time because there was no benefit not to, mm -hmm. or no downside not to do it because. You don't count how many bullets. You don't worry about reload. So yeah, that kind of seems weird. If the reloading action was a little bit clunky or slow, then there would be a downside. Like, oh, I've I've run out. I get three shot, three three round bursts, and then I'm out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That that seems like it would be a, a decent, I don't know, drawback. Right. And for all we know, there could be actual like reload rules in the full thing. But again, we're only working with the jump start, so. There isn't one that I could see. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, these are all valid things to bring up. All mm -hmm. right, well, uh, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So uh, those of you watching on Twitch and YouTube, etc., etc., uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and you will see these guys next week. Bye, stream. Bye-bye.